Hi, this is Matt Allington from Accelerator BI, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use some of the basic features of Power Query. So for this demo, um, you just need to open up a new workbook. And you should have the Power Query tab if you have Power Query installed and enabled. If not, you need to go to, well, first of all, you can download it from uh, Microsoft. And then uh, to enable it, you go File, Options, come down to Add-ins, Manage Add-ins, Com Add-ins, click Go. And you'll get this dialog box and Power Query should be one of the options that you, if you've downloaded it and installed it. So I have it turned on. Okay, so for this demo, uh, what I'd like you to do is to open a new uh, browser window and go to Google and search for population over time. And you come to this, uh, this first hit here, which is the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, website. And we'll have a look at this site and you can see that there's uh, a few tables here. So this one has some um, some uh, some data about births, deaths, there's some charts here, some text. Um, but as we get down, uh, this is an interesting table here which I'd like to use in my Power Pivot data model. And so this is the, uh, the table which we're going to import using Power Query. So take a copy of the URL from the website, go back to Excel, go to Power Query, and go from web and paste the URL that you copied from uh, Google from your browser. Click OK. And then what happens is Power Query goes out to the web and analyzes that web page and comes back with some recommended um, data that it can bring in by analyzing the HTML code on that site. And you can see here that there's a number of proposals. This one is uh, nothing too interesting. Neither is this one. This one is the uh, the births and deaths that we saw before. And this one here is looking promising. This is the one that's got the population by state. So that's the one that we want. So you hover over here, right click and go edit. And that starts the Power Query uh, editor. Okay, so um, now we're going to go through a process of tidying up this data. So um, the first thing we want to do is get rid of this uh, data down the bottom. So, so there's a feature here called Remove Rows. Click on this, Remove Bottom Rows. And a dialog pops up and asks how many we want to remove. We're going to remove the four rows from the bottom. Okay, uh, the next thing to do is that you can see here that we've got the state names uh, in the first row rather than the heading. So there is a way to promote this, you know, use first row as headers, and that's promoted the uh, the first row of data into the headings. Um, now you can see that there's a missing heading here, so I can just double double click on here, and this is going to be called um, year. Also, let's get rid of this um, this first row here. So go remove rows, remove top rows, get rid of the first top row there. Now, because um, this Australian total here is a sum of all of these columns, we actually don't need this column. So we'll just click on this one and uh, remove columns. Now, note down the right-hand side here that um, Power Query keeps a history of what's actually happening when we make these changes. And so I can actually go back in time and uh, click on each of these individual steps and so what Power Query does is it actually records each step as uh, a step of a code using the M language. In fact, if you come on View and uh, turn on Formula Bar and click on Advanced Editor, you can see each of the steps that's been generated automatically by Power Query using the M language. Um, it's actually a little bit complex to understand. Um, it is possible to learn this language, but um, you know, if you are interested, you can get in there and have a look and see what's happening. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just tidy uh, these headers up. I'm going to get rid of these full stops at the end of the abbreviated state names. And um, and then what we'll do is we'll convert these into numbers. So when I select 
um, the columns here and change the data type to whole number, you see that we get this error message. Now, I can actually undo this. I'll just click here and turn it off. So the actual issue is that there's a space here in these numbers, and, and so when it tries to convert it from text to numbers, it won't convert correctly. So in order to overcome that, we'll select all of these data columns and we'll do a, um, a replace. So we select replace values and I want to find a space and I replace it with nothing. Just click OK. And that goes ahead and removes all the spaces from the digits. Now I can highlight them and turn this into whole numbers. Then the last step in the process is we're going to unpivot the data. So once again, we're going to select all of those columns, click on transform, and there's an unpivot columns option. What that does is it takes all of the column headings and puts them into individual rows. I'm going to change this attribute and call it state. And, um, and this one is going to be population thousands. Um, and then the last thing to do is file, close and load to. We'll select only create connection, add to data model, click load. You can see here it's now going through the process of downloading the data from the website and loading up into the data model. And now the load's complete, we can jump over to Power Pivot, go into Manage. You can see we have one tab here. I didn't rename. If you rename the query in Power Query, see how this is named Table 3. If you right click and edit, there's an opportunity to change the name here. Whatever name you give it here is the name that will appear in Power Pivot. So now we can add a pivot table into our workbook without doing too much uh, DAX. We can put state and year and population and rebuild the table in Excel from the data that you extracted directly from the web.